Okay, let's continue to talk about the uses of electricity. And this next part, we're going to talk about motors and generators. So an electrical motor is a device that converts electricity into motion. And that's the simplest way to think about it. It strictly takes one form of energy, electrical energy, and turns it into another form of energy, mechanical energy. It changes electricity into motion. So in a motor, the central arm of the motor that turns is called the armature. And this is the part that is being used to, con to generate mechanical motion when the, me when the motor operates. So when a direct current motor is changing direction, the current on every half turn is broken and reversed with by means of a commutator and I'm going to show you with a diagram how that looks in just a second and this allows for continuous motion in one direction so here's the a motor and you notice that you have a magnet which generates your magnetic field okay and you have electrical energy that comes in on both sides and the electrical energy passes through and comes back out like this. Now this little split right here is the split in the commutator. This is the commutator and this is the um, armature right here. This is what turns and as this turns this split allows the current to switch direction. So half of the time it's moving in this direction clockwise and then it turns and notice you have north and south here. Well, if you didn't break the circuit and reverse the direction, what would happen is this would turn a half a turn clockwise and then a half a turn counterclockwise and back and forth like that. But by reversing the direction of the current with each half turn, you allow this to continually turn in one direction because as it moves through, as the current goes through in one direction, you have the north on one side and it's attracted to the south then when it changes direction and goes back the other way it has the north on the opposite side and it's attracted to the north so you go back and forth and so the 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 flow of electrons through the armature is clockwise for half of the turn and counterclockwise for the other half of the turn and this allows the armature to always move in one direction with alternating current, the commutator is not required because the current reverses regularly. Um, the current is on its own reverses every, um, every, depends on what the cycling of the current is, but let's say it's every six, once every, every, uh, or 60 times a second or 40 times a second. So every time it reverses, this thing, that allows the armature to always turn in the same direction. So a direct current or an alternating current motor does not require the split in the commutator. And this is just an example of a, an alternating current. You'll notice that instead of a commutator with a split, you have two commutator rings here. And because this, this switches back and forth, it, it allows the current to go through half of the time, again, clockwise, half of the time counterclockwise and again it, it goes back and the current goes back and forth so the armature always turns in the same direction. Now producing electricity there are many ways to produce electricity on the left here we have a simplified um, electrical cell um, which changes electrical or excuse me chemical energy into electrical energy um, both of these the one on the, the both of these the one on the left here which is red and green has a porous disk to allow the transfer of electrons through and complete the circuit or you can use what's called a salt bridge which is on the right here um, and it can also complete the circuit so this is an electrochemical cell it's, and it's a device that
produces electricity by means of an electrical reaction. It's also called a voltaic cell or storage cell. Now, the other thing we call it is a battery. Batteries are simply voltaic cells or storage cells that change chemical reactions into electrical energy. Now, what's shown on the on the right here with all these various batteries is the way you can set these batteries up. And there are essentially two ways you can do that. You can line batteries up in series. We know what that means. And examples of that are shown in the middle here where you have, first you have a single battery, then you have two batteries that are lined up in series, and then four batteries that are lined up in series. When you do that, you notice that the voltage adds up. It goes from 1.5 to 3 to 6 volts and the current doesn't change. Remember in a series circuit the current doesn't change. Alternatively you can line up batteries in parallel um, or you can take two batteries that are in this, this group of batteries is in series and this group of batteries is in series but this group and this group are connected to each other in parallel and so what you have is each one of these is 6 volts and 500 mega, uh, milliamps. But when you put them in series or parallel like this, then you add the current together. So when you arrange cells in parallel, you increase the current. Now, we talked last week about electromagnetic induction. Electromagnetic induction is the ability to convert mechanical motion into electrical current. Now two slides ago we just said that a motor, electrical motor, converts electrical current into mechanical motion. The device that converts mechanical motion into electrical current is called a generator and it works through the process of electromagnetic induction. So magnetism is used to produce a magnetic field and then you pass a conductor through that field and the electrical current is produced. So the passing of the conductor, you mechanically move a conducting material through a magnetic field and it produces electricity. So for example, here on the left, you see this magnet. When you push that magnet inside the coil, what will happen is this voltmeter will will show that there's a magnet or electrical current produced. And that device is called a generator. It uses electromagnetic induction to produce electricity. Now here's a, a little bit more complicated version of the same thing. This person is turning this, this loop and you see it's very similar. There's a commutator here on the right with a split. And the reason it's split is so that you can produce direct current, so that it'll reverse direction with each turn, and with each half turn, excuse me. So you're moving this through this magnetic field, and as you do that, the split allows this to go back and forth and keep the electricity moving in one direction. But a generator is simply an electrical motor and that's been made to work in reverse to produce electricity. And there are both AC generators and DC generators. And the difference between an AC generator and a DC generator, just like the difference between an AC motor and a DC motor, is the commutator. One has a split ring, like this, and one has two rings that are called slip rings or split ring, or I'm sorry, slip rings. This is a split ring, and this is a slip ring. So when you have it connected like this, as this goes through, each half turn, the electrical uh, direction reverses. And that's what happens with an AC generator. On this side, because you have a split ring, each turn causes the electrical energy to continue to move in the same direction. That allows this, that's what this split is for. Now another way to produce electricity is this great big long word called magnetohydrodynamic generators. And magnetohydrodynamic generators simply take salt water, which has ions in it, and passes it through a magnetic field at a very high velocity. And because 
what you're doing is passing electrical charge again through a magnetic field and because it's microscopic you have to do it at high speeds in order to produce a significant amount of electricity and this is what it looks like you have an ionized fluid in the middle here and it travels very fast through this in this direction then you have a magnetic magnetic uh, area in this point and then electrical energy is produced here and here and it, tra it goes out from here, or excuse me, out from here and around and then comes back here. And steam, the producer of the mechanical energy, um, probably the older ones, you've seen these windmills. Um, windmills are used to grind stuff, but they're also used to produce electricity. In that situation, the wind is used to turn the commutator or the armature arm or the commutator. Steam, you can heat uh, water and produce steam. Nuclear power is used to heat water and produce steam. Coal is used to do that. And th when the steam is produced, it's forced through a turbine which turns. And again, when you turn it, the next thing, the next thing you know, you've got electrical energy. And then waterfalls uh, or dams are used to turn the generator. Other sources of electricity include light. There's something known as the photoelectric effect where photons fall into certain types of materials. They produce electrical charge that can be collected. And you've seen these light cells that, that are used sometimes in calculators and various other devices. And then they can also put light cells on houses to produce electricity. Friction. Uh, generally produces static electricity. You probably rubbed your feet on the carpet or rubbed a balloon and been able to produce static electricity that way. Chemical reactions we've already mentioned. Uh, electromagnetic induction we've talked a great deal about. Pressure. Now this is an interesting um, process where you can actually hammer certain types of materials in the process of deformation and then regeneration leads to the production of electricity and this is called piezoelectricity. And then heat. Heating two metals that are different causes a flow of electricity. Um, again, how much you get depends on what metals you select. That's called thermoelectricity. Now we're going to finish up talking about one more concept and this is called uh, uh, transformer or how a transformer works. There are transformers all over the place. Um, these big boxes on telephone poles that you see around town are transformers. And the reason for that is that elect electricity when it's produced is produced at very, very high energy voltage. And, then, and the reason it's produced at high energy is be and high voltage is so that you can transport it over long period over long distances. It requires a great deal of, of uh, energy to transport electricity through even the best conductors. However, once you get to the house, it, you don't want to send 50,000 or 100,000 volts of electricity into a home. That's considered sort of dangerous, and so most home, homes are set up to operate on either 110 or 220 volts. There are a few appliances that require 220 volts, but most can operate on 110 volts. And so what is used uh, to change that is called a transformer, and what it does is it, it either steps down the voltage, that is, decreases it, or steps up the voltage, that is, increase it. And the way it does that is it's a... As the picture is shown here, it's a um, magnetic, or excuse me, it's a core that's shaped in a, in a circle or a square, and then you have windings around one end of it called the primary winding, which has a certain number of turns, and a secondary winding, which has a certain number of turns. And you notice there are more turns in the primary than there are in the secondary. So when you go from more to less in terms of the number of turns, you're stepping down the voltage that comes out. If you reverse this, that is, you, you make the 
primary, the one that has less turns, and the secondary, the one that has more turns, then you're stepping it up. And so a transformer is a device that either increases or steps up or decreases, steps down the voltage. And the primary co coil is the part of the transformer that takes on the electricity from the source. And then the secondary coil is that which takes, that sends the electricity out. And depending on this differential between the number of coils on one side versus the other, you can control the amount of, of voltage that comes out of the secondary coil. So by adjusting the ratio of terms between the primary and the secondary coil, the voltage can be raised or lowered. And as you see here, the top shows a step up transformer. You start out at 110 or 120 volts, you have a smaller number of coils in the primary and a greater number of turns in the secondary, and so what comes out is 220. Now, if you actually count this, it's 5 on this side and 10 on the other side. So it's actually a ratio that you can count. And the bottom here is exactly the opposite. You start out with a high number of turns and go to a lower number of turns. You decrease the voltage.